current displacement values, and is there a need to change them? And what are some of the values we change based upon the test results, what we have? And just to give you some basic and background information on the amount of work, what we did, and this is the string. This is the strain gauge testing or the st st strain gauge testing apparatus, what we built in house. As you can see, it's got a big enough gearbox to share an inch and an eight sucker rod pin. And the bottom two pictures are the examples of the strain gauges, what we used for this test. The picture on your left represents a shear strain gauge, and the picture on your right is an example of a normal strain gauge. These two strain gauges have the capability to measure strain both in positive and negative direction. And you can also see the wires coming out of the machine from the strain gauges, and this goes to the data acquisition system. Our data acquisition system was pretty state of the art, and it had the capability, it still has the capability to plot, I think, 10,000 data points per second. And this is the step-by-step -step procedure on how we did this phase of the project. Each and every grade and size of sucker rod was made up to its respective displacement value and the amount of preload stress in the stress relief of the sucker rod pin was measured using the strain gauges, what you just saw. The amount of preload stress was then compared to the design yield of the sucker rod, which would basically give us a percentage. This percentage, we called it as a design rating, which basically gives the effectiveness of the load carrying capabilities of the displacement values, or in simple words, the effectiveness of the displacement values. And this is some of the average values average results what we got out of this test. As you can see on your left is the different sizes of sucker rods. Please keep in mind these are average values. And the picture on your right, um, the table on the right hand side, or the column on the right hand side, represents the design rating for the respective sizes of sucker rods. You can see, as you can see, the inch and an eight size of sucker rod had the highest design rating and it goes all the way down to seven eighths, three quarters, five eighths, and one inch. And this was an important piece of information, what we needed to update some of our displacement values. And keep in mind, we did not update all the displacement values. We just did some of them, whichever needed it. And this is, again, the same concept, uh, results of the design rating based upon average, uh, based upon the different grades of soccer rods. As you can see, the high strength had the highest design rating, and it goes all the way to the class D and the carbon steel grade of soccer rods. And this gives a more detailed design rating table. As you can see, it gives the design rating for the different grades and the different sizes. And I would like to point out a phenomenon based upon the numbers what we got here. Let's just, let's just take the example of the grade C and the K, which is right here. Today's practice, in today's technology, the common practice is, use, is to use the same set of displacement values or the same displacement card for both these grades. But look at the design rating for both these grades. It varies all across the board. So just by looking at the numbers, we can say that it is not appropriate to use the same displacement cards for the, both the grades of sucker rods. There's a reason for this. The physical characteristics, or in technical terms, the modulus of elasticity for the different grades of rods is different, and hence, using the same displacement card for the two different grades is not appropriate. And the same concept can be applied to grade CD, AD, and the KD, because today's practice is to use the same displacement card for all three of these grades. <coughs> I know that was, a, that was a lot of numbers, but these are some average results what we got. 